So I think that's pretty much it for the unboxing. Let's get on and install this sucker and see what it's like. Okay, so let's start off with the AM4 installation of the Thermalrite SI100 cooler. So this is an AM4 motherboard. The process is gonna be pretty much identical for AM5. Obviously you will just have a uh, slightly different settings here, but the mounting brackets are gonna be exactly the same. So we wanna remove the four screws here and here and remove these two brackets. We will be leaving the AM4 or AM5 standard backplate in position. Obviously with AM5 it doesn't come off anyway, but with the AM4 one it does have a tendency to uh, drop away. So ideally you want to try and do this if you possibly can on a nice flat surface like we've got here um, or just make sure you've got someone with you or some means of actually holding the AM4 backplate in place whilst you loosen off the screws. So with the screws removed you can remove the plastic AM4 brackets also. Next up we're going to install the pinky red standoffs and there's four of them so one over each one of the protrusions coming from the AM4 backplate or AM5 backplate, whichever system you're using. If they don't fit on quite well, you can turn them up the other way and they should fit a little bit better. Just make sure that they're in nicely. There we go. So now we can attach the brackets to the top. So these are the AM4 brackets and these will attach to the top like so with the kind of the angle facing inward. So you can rest both of the brackets on the top, then get the other four screws which are included in that segment of the bag. Just drop those down through the hole and if you want to you can get the thread started by hand just to make sure they tighten up and aren't cross threaded. Of course if you're using a screwdriver you can just use the reverse threading method. So just uh, screw backwards until it clicks and then you can fully tighten them down. So we're going to go ahead now and fully tighten them down or pretty much most of the way. I would suggest with this, like with CPU coolers in general, if you do opposing sides, and that way you'll find that your AM4 backplate will uh, be in the right position and won't have uneven pressure on it. And just keep on going until the screws reach a hard stop. Okay, so that is that part done. So now we can apply some thermal paste. I'm gonna be installing MX4 from Arctic, just for testing purposes, because that is what we generally use. So don't want to uh, add any extra variables to our testing. You can just add a blob, like a, a grain of rice size on there. If you want to, you can use a spreader. I will be using a spreader because that is what we do for all of our testing. So just to keep things all uh, the same, but you install your thermal paste however you see fit. So now we're ready to actually attach the cooler itself. So very important. Don't forget to remove the uh, plastic film from the bottom of the CPU cooler and what we want to do is to have the uh, overhang section this bit here going over your VRM so if I just turn the board around so we're looking at something like this now obviously if you want to you can mount it around the other way there's no reason why you shouldn't you should still get excellent RAM clearance so use whichever way works for you if you've got a particularly large VRM cooler section here then you may need to actually rotate it around but ideally if you can try and get it around this way now the easiest way of doing this is to kind of match up the holes from the actual screws with the mountings and then just kind of just drop it on and it should pretty much fit again checking clearance against this section here we are very close on here but it isn't touching so that is absolutely fine so now with the cooler in place, give you the overhead shot. So these holes here are for actually tightening up the screw threads. So just pop your screwdriver through and match up with the th screw. Do a couple of turns anti-clockwise. So you hear that click and then one, two, three, just do three turns and that will get it started. And then we'll do exactly the same on the other side. So anti-clockwise, there's that little click. There it is again, and now we can do one, two, three turns. So now all we're gonna do is to do exactly the same on both sides until the screws reach a hard stop. So now we can attach the fan, which is gonna be pretty easy to do. So you probably wanna work out where your fan headers are. For us here, the fan headers are on this side. So if you get your 
cable and kind of get it roughly in the right position. Although do bear in mind that obviously the spring connectors are gonna be there. So for this instance, because that is potentially gonna be blocked by a spring, I'm actually gonna go ahead and rotate it around 90 degrees. Now in terms of actual fan mounting on the top, you can space it out in various ways. So depending on the room, you can kind of slide it around there. I'm gonna try and get it as reasonably centralized as possible. And you may find, depending on the speed of the fan, there may be a little bit of whistling noise in certain instances, depending on where you've actually got it mounted. Anyway, let's attach the spring clips to the side. This installation method with it led down is gonna be a lot easier because the spring clips are naturally gonna try and fall to the side. So let's give you a side on angle now and you can see how we put some tension into the spring. So now you can see the uh, cooler is fully attached. So if we spin it around to the side slightly and we'll look at the uh, spring clips there. So these are the spring clips. And all you wanna do is just to apply a little bit of light pressure with your thumb and push it into place until both sides are locked in. Spin it around and then basically do exactly the same thing. And there we go. That is pretty much it as far as the installation is concerned. You can spin the fan blades just to make sure that they're free and not catching on anything, although in this instance they shouldn't be anyway. So now we can actually attach the, uh, the fan header. So the fan header, very simple to do. On this particular board, the fan headers are in the top. So this is our CPU, and there's the AIO there. So what we're gonna do is to plug in the PWM header onto the pins there. And then you can obviously cable manage the, uh, the rest of it, tuck it out of the way. So it's uh, not obstructing anything. And we've got some excellent clearance there for the RAM, as you can see. So the RAM is uh, gonna be no issues whatsoever. So even the tallest of RAM, because there's no overhang whatsoever. And also we have got some pretty reasonable clearance there for the rest of the stuff, including the VRM. So you can pretty much get a finger in there almost. So yeah, pretty decent. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. This is gonna look great in our little mini ITX system when we finally get it built. So that's that done. Let's get on and do some thermal testing and we'll come back with the results.